Tony D and little Joan in the background, and this is Screenwriting Tips, The Basics. I had a um, question in the YouTube comments from Why You Came. Do you have any tips for learning screenwriting? I've been writing other forms of fictions for years, but I have cold feet about screenwriting. Yeah, I don't blame it. Um, all right, so I'll try to just go over the basics. Um, the first thing you have to understand about screenwriting 90% of it is about formatting. It's really about formatting your story in such a way that it can tell everybody in the production how to make the movie. So understand that going in. Essentially, you're creating the blueprint for the movie. Now, whether or not they'll listen to you is a completely different discussion. They won't. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> but... What you're trying to do is you're trying to give everybody the instructions on what's in the movie, how to make it, and, um, you know, to give them just enough information. Now, some directors, producers, they don't want too much information. They, they, they sort of balk at scripts that are too detailed or too much stuff because then they want too much input from the screenwriter. It kind of depends on the director and the actors. Some directors, they'll follow the screenplay. And they're awesome. Uh, sometimes they're a little too rigid about that, but, you know, there has to be some flexibility there, obviously, if you, you know, you have to shoot. For instance, we, I was involved in a, a horror movie that initially they told me to script a scene where the characters go through a secret passage that went from the fourth floor to the basement. And then they got a different house that didn't have that secret passage. And then they didn't take that out of the script and they shot, they cheated and shot it, a, shot a uh, secret passage scene anyway. Um, so it's, it's about, um, you know, trying to please a lot of masters, but ultimately you've got to stick to the story and you have to stick to the formatting because if it's not in the proper format, it won't get past the gatekeepers. The, the director and the producers won't look at it. It has to be in the proper format because the rule of thumb is, if it is in the proper format, the rule of thumb is uh, each page is about a minute in the movie. That's not an exact science. Joan, excuse me. What? Here, come over here, you big baby. I hear you. I hear you squeaking over there um so the page per minute is not an exact thing but it's an estimate of probably over the entire course of the screenplay all right now you if you want to get into screenwriting what you have to learn number one is how the format works and there's a million books on the subject you can go on the internet now really all you need to do is uh take a take some sample scripts and look at them you can see you know exactly how to format things. You want to use that font uh, in the that you see in scripts. It's a courier font. Again, you, everything's standardized, so you get that one minute per page kind of formula. All right, Joe, I'll put you down. Jeez, uh, finally get her back in the video, and this is how she treats me. Um, so you know, look uh, again. There's a million screenplay books on the subject. My favorite screenplay book is Adventures in the Screenwriting Trade by William Goldman. And the reason I like William Goldman's book on screenwriting, and he has a few of them, is because he's a successful screenwriter. <laughs> so there are a lot of guys who write screenplay uh, books, and they're only so successful, right? I mean, look, William Goldman's the king. He's really the king. So I recommend any book by William Goldman that this Adventures in the Screenwriting Trade is my Bible for screenwriting, uh, my holy book on the subject. So definitely I would recommend buying that. Um, it also has a, a, a screenplay in there from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which is a great screenplay. Um, and uh, how do you get into it? Well, the difference between writing uh, screenplays and, let's say, prose, the biggest hurdle there is in screenplays everything's dialogue driven and remember the rule you're always showing not telling um, so you want things to come out in the dialogue and in the action so for instance 
if you were writing a scene about me doing this video, you would write interior, um, office, internet setup, um, you know, devastatingly handsome writer addresses camera for YouTube video. And uh, then you would just start the dialogue and boom, 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 boom. You don't want to have too much dialogue from one character in any situation. There's all, there's all sorts of tricks of the trade, but that's, that's one of the ones. Like if you were scripting something like this, you would want to break it up with various actions, like what I just did with Joan. Oh, he, he gets annoyed at his dog, pets her for a minute, says some more things, then decides to put her on the ground because she's whining. Joan. Um, you want to shoot for 90 pages. 90 pages is the sweet spot for a screenplay. You want the screenplay to be about 90 minutes. 90 to 95 is perfect. Um, anything over that is fine. Anything under 100 is good. Uh, once you get over 100, you're still okay. You can go all the way up to 120. After 120, then you start to get into trouble. If you go below 85, that's too little. If you're if you're at like 85, I would go back and try to add some stuff, even if it's like super tight. Even if you just add some more description or whatever, some of the characters. Um, you want to leave flexibility in a screenplay, because, for instance, you may not get the lead you want. You may not get every actor and actress. To look exactly like you want and they may have to do things around that for various reasons it, de it depends on the move kind of movie you're writing you know whether it's a big production little production or shoestring you'll probably work on a shoestring so you're gonna have to leave some flexibility so what you do is you know when you describe your characters you might say uh, Tony D um, 45 to 40 ish 50 ish writer uh, with some gray hair, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, you give enough a description to kind of get an image in your head, but not so much that you're literally putting in every detail. You just put in the details that are important that drive the story ahead. Um, so, for instance, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things in Hollywood are driven by uh, identity and uh, racial politics. If that's not important to your screenplay, you don't even mention it. You, you just don't. There's just no reason to. If it doesn't matter what the race of your character is, you don't want to mention it because they can cast anybody. And that's good. That's a good thing. Um, you know, let them decide who is best for the role. Unless you have an important screenplay where the character's culture is a factor in it. In which case, then you have to mention their race or ethnic group or whatever. So you only put everything in the screenplay, besides the formatting, is also about just putting in the exact information you need and nothing else. Anything that doesn't drive the story forward doesn't belong in there. So if you got lines of dialogue of just people effing around, that doesn't belong in there. It's everything that drives the story forward to the next scene. To the, and you have to split it up. And I talk about this all the time. First act, second act, third act. The first act, just in general, I'm not going to go deep into it. First act, you introduce the characters. You introduce the problem. And you start the characters on their journey. At the end of the first act, the, the big problem should manifest itself. Um, so... You can watch any of my trailer videos. And I'll talk about you know what's in a first, second, and third act. The second act, uh, the movie is driving forward as the characters try to overcome this problem. It gets worse somehow. Um, they're on this journey. Things start to change. More obstacles come in. Things start to uh, come to a head. And the, the end of the second act, you're leading into the climax of the movie. Then the third act, yeah, as things look their darkest, um, the climax happens, and the characters overcome somehow, and uh, uh, there's this amazing ending, and uh, then we get uh, the resolution, or the denouement, uh, where 
you know, it's after the big boss is defeated or jailed or killed. And uh, the characters now go, ah, now how have we changed? And you sort of see how they've changed. Um, so if you want to know what a good three-act breakdown is, watch some really good movies. And watch some real classic movies, too. Because classic movies will give you that three-act breakdown and how to write a screenplay a lot better than movies that you may have seen recently that you like. Because the ones that are classic, they've endured. So they're the really good ones. It's just like with books, too. It's one thing to read a book. Oh, I read this book two years ago. It just came out. It's great. Yeah, but did it endure? You know, there's a reason why certain books and movies and things endure and are timeless. And those are the ones you want to gravitate towards. Even if you're not writing a timeless classic yourself, you want to consume a lot of goodness so you understand how screenwriting works. You also want to watch movies with an eye of a screenwriter. You want to say, you know, as you're watching a movie, you know, where, where's, the, where's the thing in the, at the end of the first act? You know, and then, ah, here's the climax of the movie, you know, and then check the time, like, you know, as you're watching the movie. So this is a lot easier to do now when you watch a movie on the Internet because you can see that little bar on the bottom, see where you are in the movie, right? And you could do that, again, formatting in the screenplay. So when you hit anywhere from page 25 to 40, you should be at the end of the first act. 40 is late to end the first act, I would say. The first act tends to be smaller, more like 20 pages, 25. The second act is the biggest act. That's going to be like 35, 40, maybe even 50 pages. And then the third act, that's going to be probably the shortest act of all. Because it's short, punchy, all the payoffs happen. And that's where you're going to pay everything off. All the characters are going to tell us everything. And it's going to be a fabulous ending. Um, and the Dieu du should be in there too. The denouement is really like a page or two or three, maybe, depending on how big of a denouement you have. If you have a big cast of characters, it might be a little long, but as long as it's good, as long as all the payoffs happen, you know, the most important acts are the first act. That's what gets you the sale. And the third act, because that's what the audience is going to remember. Everything in the middle, well, it's negotiable. <laughs> So if you're going to put something that's a little weak, put it in the second act. But, uh, you know, you don't want any fat. You don't want fat in your, your screenplay. And uh, just be advised, nobody ever reads these damn things because they're Hollywood and they're barely literate uh, greed heads. And that's the big problem with screenplays in general. It's they're, They are hard to read. Uh, read a screenplay sometime. Now, I'm a screenwriter, so I've got more experience. I'm a little more... Uh, you know, I could speed through it pretty fast. One of, the, one of the tricks I've learned over the years, and I do this with my novels too, is read the dialogue aloud because the dialogue drives most of the action. Now, you'll have some screenplays where there's not a lot of dialogue because there's more actual physical action and no talking, but a lot of times dialogue drives everything forward. So read the dialogue aloud like you would as an actor, even if you're just in the room by yourself. Read the descriptions, read everything. Because remember, too, you're trying to sell a screenplay. So a lot of times a cool description, which should be kept short and punchy, not even full sentences. Don't worry about that. Uh, another guy I recommend to look at in terms of his screenplays is Shane Black. Shane Black has a great way of writing description. Uh, he's great with dialogue, too, but description's really good um, with Shane because he doesn't... He doesn't bother with like full sentences. He does all these like sort of sentence fragments, you know. He'd say something about like me sitting in a room and it'd be like uh, writer making YouTube videos about writing. He's he's uh, uh, he's got his dog which he uses as a crutch uses as a crutch to get people to watch his videos, <laughs> you know, something like that. Some real short and pu punchy and snazzy. I I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Oh, and speaking of that, another thing I recommend for screenwriters and writing and create creative people in general is improv classes. Improv will teach you 
very quickly how to generate scenes, generate ideas, and toss them away. Because writers, especially young screenwriters, get very precious about their ideas. You can't be too precious in this business because a lot of people are going to tell you, ah, we're not doing that. Oh, yeah, you know, you wanted a beautiful leading lady. Uh, our leading lady is 250 pounds. So, you know, change some of that dialogue. Um, it can happen. So, um, and you got to be willing, unfortunately, to change literally everything. The, 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 the business of screenwriting is a little separate, but it's a bit of a nightmare. But if you're writing one and you've got people who are interested, maybe they're your friends, you know, uh, don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's not that hard. It's really about, again, you're, you're formatting things as a plan to make the damn movie. Don't get coy. Don't, don't hide things. You're telling people what the hell the movie is, <laughs> right? So all the secrets got to be in that screenplay. You're not writing a book. That's what you got to get into your head. You're not writing a book. You're really writing more of an, it's closer to an instruction manual. Yeah, you'll look at Shane Black stuffs and his are more, his is more like a book, but you know, you got to keep, you know, producers will complain about too much um, description. Yeah, I've heard that. And then I've had producers complain, not enough sub uh, description. Need more, need more. So, you know, it, it, but nobody ever complains about too much dialogue. Now, the, the actors will take liberties. They always do. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to hope that they'll get the spirit of it and keep most of your bits. Uh, but it depends. It really depends on a lot of different factors that you have very little control of. It's a thankless, thankless business. William Goldman at the end was saying how he hates screenwriting and how, you know, it's just the worst thing in the world. I think he said it at an award ceremony once. Yeah, that was kind of disheartening a little bit, but um, it, there really is a craft to it. There, There is a need for good screenplays, even though there's so many bad ones out there and people don't know what they're doing. But, uh, you know, don't pay attention to those people. Because if your screen, and I've had this happen all the time, you know, I get people read my screenplays and they go, wow, this is really good. I'm really psyched to do this thing. I'm really psyched to read the dialogue and make this thing. And, you know, it's very nice to hear. And uh, so you always want that, you know. And um, if you're having trouble writing your dialogue, I always suggest going out in public and listening to people. I know that, that may, don't get yourself into trouble, but, you know, listen to how people talk and try to make the dialogue of each character uh, as different as possible, you know, within reason, you know, within reason of your plot and setting, whatever. Um, one of the exercises uh, I recommend is write dialogue between two characters with nothing else and just sort of make sure you can read any random line of that dialogue if you go down a couple of pages and uh, be able to distinguish the character because of how they talk. Right? That's a, that's a good exercise to get tuned into dialogue. But again, so is the improv. So is going out listening to people. Or even just listening to a circle of your friends talk. And, and listen to how they talk. Because people talk in sentence fragments. You know, that's, it's the, the emphasis is on communication. And my final tip is always have your characters play at the height of their intelligence. Now, it doesn't mean every character is a genius. But it means don't make the characters do stupid things. If the audience is sitting there going, There's no, why would he do that? That's dumb. That's bad. You can't have that. If you, if you need to put up another obstacle, put it up there. If you need the character to not see something, there better be an organic, real reason why he misses it. Something smart. Like, oh, I would have missed that too. And that way the audience connects. Because they're watching the movie, and they're going to scrutinize the hell out of it. And hopefully your director will follow those instructions <laughs> and make a good movie. Um, if you have any specific questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm happy to do more of these videos to answer your question about screenwriting. Get yourself a book on formatting or just go to some random website somewhere. It's easy to make a template. Um, I use Final Draft. I got a copy of Final Draft 5. And um, after you finish the screenplay, you can just import it over to um, you know, a regular Word document. I, I send it out as an RTF document to people and they can edit it and everything. 
Um, it also does all the formatting for you basically automatically, so that's really handy to have. It speeds things along. If you don't have that, it's easy enough to make a template in Word or whatever your word processing is. Uh, you can even download ones, I'm sure. Uh, there is free script writing software online. I think there's one called Celtics, which I briefly used, but I wasn't particularly enamored with. Um, and uh, you can just use Word, but make sure you're in the proper format. Make sure you got the right font, the right size, and the right margins. Formatting is key. Formatting is key. It's 90% of your job is to format correctly. And that's it for me, Tony D. and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. Don't forget, add your comments in the quest or add your questions in the comments and don't forget to buy my books at the pineys.com thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time screenwriters